Hey, Sharon from Vivid Days and we are going to go old school. So I'm going to record this on my camera because my overhead camera, I've disconnected somewhere and I can't get it working again. And it's a bit cheeky of me to get Neil to come in and fix it for me because he's planting lots of bushes in our front garden. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, why are we going old school? We are going old school with my colour palettes that I've always used in my ocean. I've experimented with the colours and I do love them. You can get lots of different pigments out there and pastes and, you know, micas and each to their own. They're all amazing. Explore them all. But I want to use these paints before they go. And I've been asked to do a clock for a client, for a present, for his um, wife. So we're going to come back and do the same colour schemes that we did on a heart piece that this client purchased. Now, some of the steps I'm taking, they're optional. You don't have to do them. It's all about you, how you connect and what you want out of your resin and also cost. Now, because I'm using this MDF board, it's a 50 centimetre round board. This is the back. It's got a little stain there. So I'm going to tape around the edge. That's what you're going to see. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use my colours as my primer. Now, this is the optional extra. I like to prime the bottom because that helps me connect. And you can see through the resin that I'm going to be using with these uh, acrylics in there. And if you want to see a step-by-step, -step, more detailed tutorial, remember I've got that very big one. So I'll try and keep this short and sweet, but talk when needed. So people that don't like my voice, switch it off. Fast forward. For people that are new to resin, you might find value in this. So it is important when you're using anything like this MDF, you prime it. You can choose to do it with normal paint primer. I'm going to do it with two layers of acrylic paint. And then that's going to show me where to place my resin on top. And because I'm going to do three layers in total, like the base and then two layers of resin, you'll see each layer and it does add value. It does give you depths. It does give you lights and shadows. And the colors I'm gonna be using is the Peebo. Now with acrylics, remember resin hates water. So if you're using a different based acrylics, they may respond differently. So always do little patch tests and less is more when it comes to acrylics. And I only mix my acrylics as I'm about to apply my board or they can go quite marshmallowy. Um, and that's not what you want but the colors i'm going to be using is for the darker size it's ultramarine and i also have a cerulean blue or a cyan as it's called there and then i have my ocean colors which i love which is the blue green green blue <laughs> that's that's the blue green that's the green blue sorry about my nails and this is the turquoise and you don't really see a lot of difference in them but these two provide a nice little shimmer and shine uh, and the other it blends in beautifully when I use my casting craft. So I will also add the Super Sparkle White to my resin because that's going to give you a nice distribution of glitter and a little bit of sparkle in my ocean. And I'm going to do this twice let it dry come in and do my first ocean part. They do want a bit of sand in there, and I'm going to try and write their initials in there. Wish me luck on that one. And also, when I come to the final layer, I'm going to see how I feel about whether I put the pebbles in there or the shells to replicate the main numbers on your clock, or whether I'm going to put um, like stickers on before I do a top layer of paint, stickers on numbers. Anyway, so it's going to be a work in process. I'll keep you on your toes, I'm sure, but come with me on this journey. And I will make sure my board's level. I'll make sure I've got some edging around here so I'm not getting it all sticky underneath. And then I will prime the back of the board before it goes to the client. But I need to get my first layer down because we're running out of time, Sharon. All right, remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share. Comments are always welcome. Visit my Etsy store um, in case you want to purchase any of my treasures. And also, if you want to showcase your art, join the Facebook group. Uh, it's all in the links below. Um, we love to be inspired by you and hopefully we'll inspire you. It's a beautiful little community. But I'll get on with this. I'll put some music on at key stages. I'll come in and talk. But other than that, I want you to just relax and immerse yourself in a watch me. And where possible, I'll give you instructions. Bye bye. And thank you for coming back and visiting.
they've blended through the oceans with the different colors it's got some beautiful tones in there i don't know if this is picking it up and i am now going to use this area just as a little bit of the beach area showing i wanted it to be more ocean than beach but a little peep hole um, I'm going to paint them with acrylic. So I did add a little bit of white here because that that just makes it more milky, in my opinion, as when the oceans meet in the beach. So I've got three colours here. Just going to use a little bit of them, mainly uh, the ivory, but just a little bit of the darker colours as the oceans meet in the sand. I might take back a little bit of the ocean area. Will be organic, and I'll let it set. And then I'm going to decide whether to come in with the coarse sand feel which i think i might do but i want to paint this just in case there's bits of it that there's gaps so that it, it um it covers the gaps and it adds for more depth and if i am going to use my coarse paste i will add some of the color cottage gold in there the dark color and the light and i'll show you what they are but what that might do is build up the sand area give me the ability to write their initials in there and have some of that nice gold shimmer coming through anyway Let's go into the next part of this. I'm loving going back to some of my old colour schemes. Love the ocean. Hi, Sharon from Vivid Days. I just wanted to show you a close-up of my blending. I hope that you can see it because it's wet, so there's a high shine. You can see it a little bit better there. I now need to let this dry, but I'm very happy with the tones. You may not want to add the white foam, but that just gives it personality for me. And it starts to bring the creation and the design concept to life. Now, these will be under the resin. So you might think, well, what's the point? Well, that's where it comes to that choice. Now, I know I'm going to see through my resin and now it's going to guide me where I'm going to add my casting craft white. I've made sure all my resin, resin, all my edges are done and I toned through my sand. So I do like that. I love that little bit of bronze coming through. So the next stage for me is this cackling, cackling place. Oh, that was the crackling paste. Not for this project, Sharon. For this one, we're using the coarse modeling paste. So this is by Golden. And I add different pigments to it. I was originally going to add the color cottage pigment, the gold. But I think I might just add the tones that are in here. But I'll see how it feels when I apply it. So I've got my paper here, which is the... Uh, artist palette is a tear off one i'll put some paste on here and you'll see me mixing the colors in there if i don't like the look of it or it looks a bit dull i'll add some of that beautiful color cottage pigments in there to add a little bit of sparkle so that's the next stage and then we will wait for that to fully dry the acrylic and we'll start with our first of two layers of resin i do love these colors it so reminds me of australia in the indian ocean Love it. Simplicity at its best, in my opinion. All right, see you shortly.
So I've added my texture, which is a coarse paste. And again, you may not want to do this. You might just want to have it painted, smooth, gold, up to you. But I just wanted some character into my beach. And I know that it would normally be more golden than this, but I want it wet currently so that I can apply their initials. And then I will assess if I feel I need to come in. So I've just seen a little gap there and paint over the colours if I'm happy with them. Currently, I really like this, really do like the texture. Just filling in my little hole. It's on there as well. You know, and from a high level, it might look like the sand dunes. <laughs> anyway, I've got like a little skewer. I'm just going to see where I'm going to put their initials because I need them to still, if the ocean comes in this way a little bit, I need them to be seen. So here we go. Don't know if you see it. I might have to go around that again. It's supposed to be a little look, look out. So it's kind of work, but I just need to redefine that. So I'm going to put my camera down so I can concentrate on this and I'll come and show you when I've done it. Now this area has fully dried and I added just a hint of gold glitter. Not too much, I just want to sparkle. So this is dry to touch. Ignore my calamine on my hands. It's just ready for when I put my gloves on. But this has managed to stay. I don't know if you can see that well so it's very subtle but you can see their initials in the sand and i'm now going to come and add my first coat of resin now if i put in the 50 by 50 centimeters that's for square so it recommends doing four seven at uh, three seven five mils of resin but i'm going to do just 300 because i um i don't have my edges that i need to do because it's round <laughs> and if i fall short it's okay it will be at the beach area which i'll come back and add clear so I'm going to be using craft resin in this one. I've worked with this one before. It's a good brand. It's a small pack. It's only one litre, but um, it's still a good brand. It's very versatile. It's got a medium consistency, which is what I enjoy. So we're going to use this and hopefully I've got enough. Well, I should have enough for completing this full project. And I put my paint in an order that I'm going to use them. And to save on wastage, I'm going to try and put them all in one cup after each other. That way you're getting some blending of tones through until I get to my casting craft white where I want it to be pure. But then I do have super sparkle white that I will add into my resin when it's mixed. And you will see me work my way from the back to the front. This is the underlay of the resin. So it's not about perfection. This is about gradiating adding some waves in there so we get a little bit of depth so when we add our second one you can really sense that churning of the ocean so i am going to put my mask on and we are going to get on with this project and that will be um one of two layers done and then i get to add my numbers and get neil to put my clock part in <laughs> all right let's get on with this
Hi everybody, Sean from Vivid Days. I have mixed up my resin. There's going to be about 360ml using this. I've done 400 All my bubbles are just coming to the top, so I'm just leaving that to sit wait a little bit. And we are going to do exactly the same colours as before. No changes. The Colour Cottage Super Sparkle White has been added into my resin already. And we are just going to now work on this piece. The Ocean Wave Foam. I could see that my board wasn't level because I added some extra resin here so it pushed it back and because I could see that was happening I didn't want it to come this way and cover up the initials so I decided to let it flow back this way because I know I've still got enough shadow here that if I now come and bolster the white area here it will really look like that ocean's churning and coming in here so you know you can always save it with different layers so these did move but these are going to be underneath the ocean um, and you'll see them coming through but it will dull it off and yeah i think that's really it i think we're gonna just um it's only been a couple of days so i don't need to sand it down I'm just gonna have some fun turn my music up and repeat the process um just getting some rid of some of the dust so I repeat that process once this part's done then i'll get neil to help put the centerpiece in for the clock i'll add my numbers and then we will add our flood, flood coat just in case there's any imperfections when we are drilling the holes for the clocks. And that should be it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But enjoy this process uh, and I hope you relax in the music and I'll see you at the other side of this. Thank you all.
UK, we are coming in for a slight review before we go on to the next stage and I will show you what I've done, what my thought processes are and where we're at. So I've made sure my board is level before we start any work and it's been a few days since I've worked on this so I'm going to lightly sand it because I'm going to do another coat of resin. Now the reason I'm doing this next coat of resin is my Neil came in and he's drilled me a hole bless him all the way through I'll show you what it looks like at the back and i made sure it's taped up so if any resin leaks through what i am going to do now is get a little bit of vaseline uh, with a cotton bud and just jot it around the edge there uh, and that will help stop the resin go through now the reason i wanted to do the hole now when it's still got another bit of resin to go is it's just for the composition so i know where it's going to be you may not want to do that stage. You may want to have drilled your hole to start with. I prefer it this way because then I know at least now where my numbers are going to go. And I've made sure that, or should I say Neil's made sure for me, that my clock attachments are going to fit through there easy. And I've got small, medium and large because I wasn't sure how it's going to be. Anyway, you'll see me put the numbers on this. But something that I enjoy, something that's a little bit disjointed for me is love. The uh, beach part and the different shades here. I love how you can see layer one and layer two, but I think I just want to add a little bit more foaminess there and maybe here. So you can see layer one and layer two, and you might think, oh, leave it Sharon, but I know I can control it. And the idea being this is come onto the beach, so it's rushing forward. So I might just leave it at that. It's going to be organic. This is a big wave that's rolling in. So there's going to be parts that I just want brighter white here. But I'm thinking I'm going to get this tone now to come over the dark blue. And you think, well, why would you do that, Sharon? <laughs> Again, it's fluid. When you're doing art, you just work with it and move with it. So because when it is stood up, hey, presto, I can see the um, the wave that's come onto the beach. And I can see the one churning up behind it. Now, I think that should be one in the background. And this is the disjointed bit here for me. So in my mind's eye, let me just get this straight again. What I am going to attempt to do is if I bring this colour over here, you're still going to see the deeper side, but it'll look like it's more connected. And then what I intend to do is look as though this is a third wave in the back. And it's not going to have as much foam as this, but it looks like it's just starting to rise. And there'll be a little gap because you don't have the white foam in it all. And maybe somehow join it up with here, where this is going to be the white foam of it where it's raised. Because in my mind's eye, I normally see three a set of three rolling in waves. And I think that when it's stood up will make it look like a more choppier ocean like it is in Australia where you get those big waves now. Again, each to their own. Switch off the screen now if you're screaming and you don't enjoy it, but this is where I want to take it. And then when this has almost dried, I'm going to put my numbers in. So what you're going to do is I'm going to draw around it in a circle so that I know where it's going to be. And then I'm going to mark out where halfway is for my 12, my six, my nines and all that. So that when I do come to stick those numbers on, uh, I know where they are. So it'll have a very thin flood coat and the numbers will stick to it just as it is getting tacky. Not before, because I know if I'm going to put numbers here and here, it could distort my waves. Um, yeah, that's where I'm going. Maybe one layer too many. But I think you've got to stick true to your art. If I'm going to give this as a gift, when I stand and look at it, it's got to look correct for me and uh, not disjointed. And again, I'm not saying you all have to do this. It's a personal journey. But people have been asking for me to talk through my thought processes and whys. And that's the whys. So I'm super excited by this. I won't mind keeping this clock for myself. But it's for a present. So it's not going to be able to be. It's going to be a lovely gift from this gentleman here ooh, to this lady anyway let's get on with this Sharon
let you in with a little secret. It's not really a secret because I'm sharing it, but I woke up this morning and you can see a tiny little bit here, which implies that the white air I did last night are leaked and you got to see it dramatically here and I did not like it. So I've been brave and I've just come through and it's still drying and added acrylic tones back through. Now you might all be gasping going, no, Sharon, no, it's beautiful resin. But I just have to be able to live with my art and I didn't like, it devalued this front area. So this part is all great. Love this, love this. This still love, can tolerate that. This didn't. So I've just come through with the blues and the tones. So this will have a very thin coat, top coat here, but I will add some pigments here just to blend this colour through with resin. And then that will be it. But this is just me sharing and showing you, if you can see there, the difference between the acrylic and the resin. But this is just me showing you how you can salvage um, some of your art. And uh, I'll probably put, sorry, you've got a right glare on here. I will most likely put the green tone here over this just to uh, marry it all through but also to still give you the tones of this but then this gives you the feeling that it is in depth that's the thought i'm doing this in daylight <laughs> which is going to help and i am off work today and tomorrow so i'll be able to make sure that this project is finished in time for christmas and i just want it to be how i would be happy with it so you may not choose to do that you can leave your art at whatever stage you want but this is just me sharing the process all right sharon let's get on with this
So what have I done since you last saw me? Well, I have now removed all the paper that I had at the back and the masking tape and tape and my resin nibbles. It's hard for you to see in here, but when you put your heat gun on it and rock it backwards and forwards for 10 seconds, it comes off and those resin nipples come off with it. And just lightly sand it just to make sure there's no rough edges around there and that's good to go. And I had no leakage, even from the middle there where Neil drilled my hole, uh, which is really good news. And I've just wiped all the back area to get rid of excessive dust, but I'll need to do that again. But the Vaseline worked. The Vaseline uh, stopped it going down the middle and it kept the image really great so we're not going to come in and do a close-up at the image yet but what i am going to do also now by the way do love this image way better than the uh, one i did before the edited so we're now coming in and we're going to uh, put our clock together after i've put my numbers on so this came as a package from amazon and there's also the back now this was originally white but i came in and gold spray paint painted it i sprayed it with gold spray paint <laughs> what do you say that these were originally white i wanted them gold for a contrast and to match the number so i got gold spray paint <laughs> um and neil's gonna put the mechanics together because it comes with one of those back pieces like so and there are like small medium and large ones with this area here so he's going to work out for me which one needs to go on there and i will film that and these are the numbers that i went for because i think this is going to be it's gold with a slightly dark edge i think it's going to make it stand out quite nicely against that and sort of come in with the illusion of the beach but with the colors you'd see so i think that's going to be perfect so i'm really happy with this overall image but i'll show you that at the end what I'm going to do now is draw around this on my paper, then remove it to safety, and then you're going to see me map out where my numbers are going to go. Voila, once those are in place, Neil will come in and do the mechanics, and I will sign this pace, pace, and it will be good to go just in time for Christmas. So I hope this wonderful lady that's receiving this will enjoy it as much as I do. Aesthetically, I think it's really pleasing. On the eye lots of depth lots of movement lots of sparkle very hard to get a dust free sort of environment for me but i've done my best i can only see one sort of little blemish but i think i look for the faults instead of all the things that's nice about it so yeah we'll come back shortly
Okay, so I have finished with the spacing of my numbers. I'm hoping that they're going to stick beautifully. I mean, they're not moving, but I think you'd be able to pull them off. But I really don't want to put a coat of resin over the top just for the sake of it or to secure them in. I might have to maybe attach glue, but then there's always a risk it's going to spill out. But I think it's going to be fine. But yeah, I love this piece. I uh, cannot wait to put the motor handle on it. It's going to be collected tomorrow at 10.30. But I should have enough time in natural daylight to show you up close at this, I think, stunning piece with lots of movements and churning of the ocean. So hang in there. We're nearly ready for review. Just to show you the gold spray paint that I use for the handles. They just came in a silver, but I wanted it to be gold. And I think it's the right decision for this clock. And it took two coats and um, one every 20 minutes beautiful um like uh, gold finish so we attempted to put the clock mechanism at the back in the hands i spray paint yeah. them you just... <laughs> that's a fanfare by neil and i might keep that in now just to get back <laughs> but everything is done on my video <laughs> Dirty bugger. <laughs> That's why you blame me. <laughs> I think they could tell the sound came that way, mate. Don't think so. All right. So take two. Um, you saw Neil painstakingly trying to get my clock mechanism on here. He did everything right, but alas, the mechanism was like clicking but it wasn't moving it we tried dismantling many things putting it together and we couldn't get it to work and so we had to order another one with a long shaft and that's a very hot tip here that don't forget the size of your mdf plus the layering of your resin on top of it and you need to have a good amount of distance to be able to grip your clock mechanism correctly anyway take two this present has to go tomorrow <laughs> Uh, so Neil's going to now put it on again so you can see it working and then this present will be collected and off on its merry little way so all right version two Neil all right let's give it a go you haven't even got the parts with here no. there we go okay spray painted the handles gold again and these ones were slightly longer so I think sometimes things are meant to be There's the long shaft coming through. That's easy. So that's a washer that's going down. washer goes on. And Zeus is just uh, getting excited by nothing. enough to grip yeah otherwise so it will fall on it around all right yeah. and that's the part that you need to make sure you've got excess uh sticking out so there's it looks like you can get multiple but there's like a small a standard and then a long so this one requested a long shaft that's how sort of tall it is these ones will have different holes so the hour is the bigger hole that faces up. Hey, Sharon here for review. I know you've seen this throughout, but I love this piece. I'm so happy that I edited that top part. Sorry for the high reflection. Uh, you can now see what looks like the third wave rising up. And you could say that that's the ocean in the background or from here, here, or you could say it's the skyline. But I just love 
how that's capping there and it's darker and comes into this wave that's just about rolling over. You can see movement and force in those extra layers under there. Love coming down to this one where it's all churning because it's just crashing against the sand. And I spray painted these handles the second time because the first one didn't work. And I love that. I love uh, the little hand, um, second hand that's going around. And I think it just complements these numbers that I got from Amazon as well. Uh, learns for me is know the length of the shaft you need for your clock. Check your mechanism well before you're about to use it so you're not pushing it to the timeline. And maybe get a clock grid because spreading your numbers out, believe it or not, is harder than you think if you want to get it stuck on there once and right. And I know that this might not be perfect, but it's as near, damn it, because it's nearly 10 past nine, so it's not far off there. And I love the challenge that was given me. So it's a 50 centimetre board. I think it's a perfect size. I would definitely have this on my wall. I love... Oh, Let's see if it'll focus the initials in the sand. That was actually challenging uh, to make sure that they're there. And that's just made it a more personal gift that is being given from said uh, gentleman to his wife. So I really am glad that I think all the happy accidents I had along the way led me to this. And I do my waves different to everybody. You don't see all the lacing going back or anything. I really want to feel the power in the ocean and the wave. And I think that's why sometimes you come in and you see me adding these little highlights and lowlights and a little bit of movement there and froth coming up and then these different layers that are covered up adds to that churning feeling for me. That's how I enjoy my oceans. And I really do enjoy the super sparkle white and the bit of glitter that's on the sand and the super sparkles throughout it all. It's very subtle. It's only as the light captures it, sorry, you sort of see it. But when you're looking straight on at it, you can't really uh, notice it as much. So it's subtle. And then as you're walking, just adds to that glistening of the ocean or the sand. And I hope that um, they enjoy this piece because I always think to myself, I want to sell something that I would be happy to have on my wall. But I think goal has been achieved. A clock, ocean piece, true to myself and my colours. I think it's quite elegant with the gold embellishments, but I would love your thoughts on that. And if you have worked with clocks before in incorporating them into your art, did you find trouble on your first one, getting your shafts right uh, and numbers? And if you've got any tips or knowledge, I'd love for you to share in the comments here and uh, share with the art community. And would you have um, used gold like I did? Love your thoughts on that. But remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Remember to join my Facebook page if you want to showcase your art, whatever type of art you enjoy doing. And remember to um, visit my Etsy store. Uh, there might be some treasures there along the way uh, should you wish to purchase. But yeah, thank you for sticking with me with this project. Uh, I'm hoping that the lady that this gift is for from her husband will watch this video after she's been giving it and let me know what she thinks to it and again it's not perfect I can always see imperfections and for me in my art space which is a room within my home I still have the challenges of dust but you know it's unique it's original and I think it's true to myself anyway I'm Sharon I'm digressing I just want to wish everybody a wonderful 2021 I hope that it brings you safety health happiness and lots of magical memories and if you're in the art community i will wish you nothing but love and joy and i hope that people out there enjoy your art as well that's enough of shine digressing uh yeah let's get on with well saying goodbye and see you on the next video have the time of your life bye bye